Uh, so chapter 9 is about articulations or joints and uh, articulations are the uh, connection between the two uh, bones. Um, this connection uh, may be for different reasons. One, it could be for a stabilization of the joints or it could be for the mobility. So based on that, there are two different classification. Uh, one of the classification is based on the function or, or mobility. Um, and um, under that, you have three different types of joints. Uh, one is called synarthrosis. It means these uh, joints are not mobile. The second one is called amphiarthrosis, that they are slightly uh, mobile. And the third one is called diarthrosis, that they can move uh, freely. Uh, the second classification is based on a structure or uh, histological features. So uh, some of them are uh, called fibrous joints, so they have uh, collagenous fibers. The sec second one is the cartilaginous joints, and that is related to cartilage. So it can be hyaline cartilage or fibrocartilage. And the third one is called synovial joints, and these are very mobile uh, joints, and they are made of uh, hyaline cartilage. They may have fibrocartilage, but mainly this hyaline cartilage. So this classification of the joints are very important to know. Uh, so the first one is called synarthrosis. He, this is a, um, a functional classification. It means they are not uh, movable based on the histological features. That is, uh, they are subdivided into fibrous, cartilaginous, and bony. Uh, so the fibrous again divides into two parts. One is suture and the other one is gonfosis. Suture is between uh, the bones uh, in the skull. So uh, these are the flat bones and these uh, connections that you see, these are called sutures. So it's a type of joints and uh, they are like a sawtooth. They, they interlock with each other and they are connected uh, with each other uh, by a dense and regular connective tissue. Uh, so this jo joint is not the same as sutural bones that we talked about it in the classification of the bones. It just means the sutural bones are located in the sutures, and suture itself is a joint. It's a non-mobile joint. So the gonfosis is located in the jaws. Uh, so this is the teeth, and this is the teeth uh, as a tooth socket. socket. Uh, so that these teeth are um, uh, you know, inserted in the upper or lower jaws, in the, in the uh, maxilla or mandible, through these uh, ligaments. Uh, so uh, these are the uh, ligaments and these are called the gonfoses. So this is dense regular connective tissue. There is also there is other structures in the teeth that uh, support um, this connection. It's not the, uh, just these uh, ligaments, but if there is uh, infection growth around this area, uh, then it, it can destroy uh, these uh, ligaments. Uh, so this is what you can see in the periodontitis. Uh, the tooth can fall. Also, if there is any osteoporosis uh, forms here, so the uh, bone become uh, weaker, uh, so then also this connection is lost and uh, the tooth can fall. Uh, the second type of uh, synarthrosis is called cartilaginous. Uh, these type of uh, joints, these are called synchondrosis. It means that they are made of cartilage, but the cartilage is not mobile. Uh, one example is that uh, epiphyseal growth plate, which is uh, located between epiphysis and the aphysis of the long bone, and this is the area that the bones grow, uh, but they are not mobile. And the second one is this, this area between the first rib and also the sternum. This is manubrium of sternum, and this cartilage is not uh, mobile. These other cartilages are mobile, but this one is not the mobile one. The third type of synarthrosis is called synostosis. This is made of connection between the two bones. Um, so one example is in the frontal bone that initially that when a baby is born, the frontal bone is a little bit separated. There's two of them on each side, one on each side, uh, but then they fuse together and uh, they, were, they, will make, they are immobile, so they cannot move. Another example can be in the mandible and the lower jaw. So again, uh, 
uh, when a baby is born there's a little bit separation and then uh, they fuse together and uh, they will not have any kind of uh, mobility uh, so there's uh, you know the different type of um, connection that can happen between um, different uh, bones uh, the third example is uh, epiphyseal growth plate which was this one so this one can uh, later on fuse so ossify this area and once it's ossif ossified uh, then uh, it changes from cartilaginous uh, to the bony uh, from synchondrosis to synostosis so this happens after the puberty when the growth stops uh, then that change will happen uh, so the second type of uh, joints based on the mobility is called amphiarthrosis so there is some mobility here not a lot uh, they are divided into fibrous and cartilaginous An example of the fibrous is called syndesmosis it, it means that these are made of dense regular connective tissue and you see it between um, the tibia and fibula and the lower extremity or between radius and ulna in the upper extremity the second type of amphiarthrosis is called symphysis this is made of fibrocartilage and a good example is between the two pubic bones here this is the pubic surfaces between the two pubic bones so connecting these two bones together but in the later part of the pregnancy near the labor uh, uh, that uh, this joint becomes softer and uh, during labor it can actually stretch a little bit uh, so that the fetus can pass through birth canal Another example of the symphysis can be in, in the intervertebral discs so between the bodies of the vertebrae. And that gives uh, mobility to the uh, vertebral column but also keep uh, the vertebral column together. So it, it keeps it uh, strong but also gives it some flexibility at the same time. Uh, the third type of joint based on mobility, this is called diarthrosis and there is a lot of movements in these kind of uh, joints uh, these are called synovial joints and these are made of the cartilages mainly hyaline cartilage uh, so one at the end of each bone and they are connected with each other and this is a capsule that wraps around uh, that area so I will talk about the diarthrosis in much more detail um, so um, this is the diarthrosis. The way to uh, easy to, uh, way to understand this is just look at this image. This is one bone, and this is another bone. So at the end of each bone, there is a cartilage, and that is the hyaline cartilage there. Okay. Um, so in the in between that you see there is a space there, and this is called the uh, joint cavity or the synovial cavity, and the content of that is the synovial fluid content of this is synovial fluid uh, also uh, synovial joints have a capsule so this is the capsule this is the capsule uh, so this is made of two layers this is the external layer which is dense irregular connective tissue uh, which means resist forces from different directions so these are collagen fibers and the inner layer uh, this is made of two other type of tissue one is the loose areolar connective tissue uh, that contains uh, blood vessels and the innermost uh, layer of tissue that is the epithelial tissue uh, so um, the fluid from this area um, from the loose areolar connective tissue um, the, the blood vessel that is in the loose areolar connective tissue leaves and then uh, passes through the epithelial layer and then it goes to the synovial cavity and fills that area and that is the synovial fluid so it is a filtrate of plasma plus hyaluronic acid hyaluronic acid absorbs water is very slippery and that reduces friction so when uh, these bones move because of the muscle contraction there's a cartilage there this is one way to protect these bones and another one is that fluid around this area that is very slippery and if that fluid is not there then, then the cartilage can be damaged 
easily. Also, as you remember, the cartilage does not have uh, blood vessels, so it's getting its nutrient by uh, diffusion. So the, the fluid here contains a lot of nutrients as well. And uh, finally, there are some uh, immune cells are here, so in case there is infection comes into the cavity or a foreign body, small pieces of the bone or cartilage um, uh, fills up this area, these immune cells go there and uh, destroy or remove uh, the foreign particles or the infections from that area. So inside the synovial cavity, it is very sterile, no bacteria, no infection, nothing should be there. If there is, then it will cause uh, arthritis and that can cause damage uh, to the joint. Um, also, uh, in this area, if there is a, uh, this tissue, the synovial tissue grows in this area, uh, this is a disease, is called rheumatoid arthritis, develop rheumatoid arthritis, and that is an autoimmune condition uh, that uh, cause distraction of this part of the uh, joint and the bone, so it will cause deformity. Compare that with the osteoarthritis that causing uh, you know, damage in the hyaline uh, cartilage and that is uh, because of the uh, you know, wear and tear if you use it for a long period of time uh, then this cartilage can, can uh, be damaged. So osteoarthritis is uh, not inflammatory uh, but rheumatoid arthritis is inflammatory and that is an autoimmune condition osteoarthritis because of the overuse. Just I want to give you some examples of different types of arthritis. There's also different ligaments uh, that, uh, that are supporting uh, joints. If you guys remember, ligaments are made of dense regular connective tissue and they're connecting um, bones to bones. So there's three different type of uh, ligaments. Uh, the most common one is the extra capsular, so that's outside of the capsule. Um, some of them are attached to the capsule, for example, and a good example of that is in the shoulder joint, which I will show you to you later, later. And the last one is intracapsular, that is inside the joint, and a good example is in the knee joint. Also, you see intracapsular in the uh, hip joint. Uh, there's also blood vessels and nerves are there. The nerves for in, the, in the joints have three different functions. One is uh, for, for pain, so if there's any kind of damage, uh, that will uh, provide information, any kind of physical damage or inflammation, infection, anything. Uh, it is important for the position of the joint, so that information uh, is sent to the cerebellum. Uh, so you f you actually consciously uh, understand what what um, direction is moving your joint, but also so there's subconscious uh, information that is sent to the brain, and even if you don't pay attention to it, uh, that information is processed and it's important for balance. Uh, there is also a stretch receptors are around the joint capsule, and that is also giving information about the position of the joints. We will come back to this later when we get to the um, nervous system. So I will discuss this in more detail at that time. Uh, there is also blood vessels there and I already talked about that, that uh, those, those blood vessels provide uh, plasma filtrate uh, for the synovial fluid that is uh, supporting cartilage. Uh, there's also fa fatty pads are there and that can be between the fibrous layer and synovial membrane or uh, between fibrous layer and the bone and that provides a cushion uh, so it, it has a physical uh, protecting feature. Uh, there's also fibrocartilage in uh, some joints uh, those are called articular discs or menisci uh, meniscus is the singular form, menisci or the plural form, and uh, they are um, actually increasing the size of the joints. Um, it is uh, improving the uh, fitting of one joint uh, or one bone on the, on the other bone. It stabilizes the joint 
and because of the stability it reduces abnormal movements so if the abnormal movements are decreased then there is less damage to the uh, joint and a good example of uh, articular disc or a knee joint uh, other features that you see in the synovial joint this is called bursa bursa is the plural form these are sacs or pouches that contains a synovial fluid and that fluid is coming from the synovial membrane so they are located in an area of high friction so anytime there is a, a one tendon or a ligament is near a bone and there is a lot of movements around that area or if a bone is under the skin or if a muscle is near the bone there is a lot of movements and friction in that area and then you have these bursae so to reduce uh, damage uh, of underlying tissue that is the main reason for it um, the tendon uh, sheets uh, they have similarity with the bursae because they are made of the uh, you know, synovial membrane that contains synovial fluid same idea there but they are elongated and they, they wrap around the tendon so as you can see here there is a tendon here and that is just above the bone so there's when the muscle contracts uh, the you know the length of this uh, may change uh, and uh, the, it go over the bone and they may cause uh, the physical damage so uh, when they are wrapped by these tendon sheets there is no damage there there is no inflammation no pain nothing uh, there is an important uh, issue about the synovial joints because when the joints are mobile then they are less stable um, you know some other joints like amphiarthrosis or synarthrosis they are very very stable joints uh, but uh, when it comes to synovial joints they are less stable because they are more uh, mobile uh, but there are different uh, anatomical features that supporting these uh, joints and make them more stable uh, so, for example, you have tendons around the joints, ligaments, muscles, fat, um, the specific uh, anatomical shape of each joint or each bone. They all give uh, some way uh, a protecting feature for these joints, may make them more uh, stabilized. And we can see that examples later on. I will show you some of the examples later. Uh, some of the joints are very very mobile for example the shoulder joint which is the most mobile joint in the body or the hip joint is the second most mobile in the in the body and they are wrapped around by different muscles and the different tendons of those muscles so uh, those muscles and tendons give a lot of stabilization around those uh, joints without those uh, tendons uh, these joints can be very unstable um, also uh, loss of ligaments tendons uh, wrapped around the knee joints and also in the foot uh, because there's a lot of weight uh, on those two joints and, and make them uh, more stable and we can see that later I don't have images of the foot I removed it because it's not in your textbook uh, but for the knee joint I will show you the supporting structures Uh, so synovial joints are uh, classified based on the range of motions uh, if you remember uh, there are three different planes in the body uh, one is the sagittal the other one is the coronal and the third one is transverse so based on that uh, they are classified there is uh, four different classification based on the range of movement uh, so the first one is these are called uh, non-axial uh, and the non-axial joints are called plane joints so it means that they are uh, just gliding or they are sliding on top of each other without any specific axis uh, very good examples are the, uh, the, the bones here in the wrist and an ankle so intercarpal and, and intertarsal joints and also uh, the joints between the uh, vertebrae so those, those facet uh, joints uh, if you remember it uh, from the chapter 7 those are the ones that are uh, uh, very good as a, a synovial joint example so they are flat and they are sliding on top of each other without a specific direction 
The second classification is called uniaxial, so they are moving in a one specific axis, and this type of joints are uh, divided into a hinge joint and pivot joint. So the hinge joint is one direction only, so flexion and extension. Uh, one joint can be uh, convex, the other joint can be concave. Um, and the example one is here is the elbow joint, so between the trochlea of the humerus and trochlear notch of the ulna. Another one is uh, between interphalangeal joints and then the fingers and toes. And the third one can be the knee joint between uh, femur and tibia. Uh, the second type of uniaxial is called pivot joints and there is a rotation. So again in, in one uh, axis but there is a rotation here. And a good example here is the between radio ulnar joints. So here you can see the uh, head of the radius um, and uh, uh, radial notch of the ulna. So this is the proximal radio ulnar joint, this is where you can see this movements. that is uh, this kind of movements that you see is for supination and pronation. Uh, also you can see the atlantoaxial joint between this C1 and C2 in the vertebrae. Uh, then is another one is called the biaxial movement, so the biaxial movement divides into condylar and saddle joint. So condylar is uh, oval shape, so one, one, on one side you see a depression, on the other side you see a bony prominence, but it's an oval shape, it's not very deep. Uh, but they have two different movements, so this is because these are called biaxial, so flexion extension, abduction and adduction. An example here, you can see that in the metacarpal phalangeal uh, joints, so these are metacarpal bones and these are the phalanges. Uh, and also you see it in the wrist area and an ankle area. You also see uh, these joints between the uh, wrist bones and between uh, the forearm bones and between the ankle bones and leg bones. You can see that. Saddle joint is not that common. Uh, you have one uh, concave uh, and one convex. Uh, but they are moving in two different directions, abduction, adduction, and flexion and extension. Um, so this is a little bit deeper than this one. Um, and uh, the only area that you see is in the carpal, metacarpal joint of the thumb. The last one is multiaxial, so they are going in a different direction. Uh, one side is a spherical shape and the other side has a deeper depression. Um, so this is uh, the most mobile joints and the one that you see is in the shoulder which is again the most mobile joint in the body and hip joint which is also very mobile. But uh, these two joints are at higher risk of uh, dislocation especially uh, the shoulder joint is much more likely to dislocate than any other joint. So these are the different types of movements. Uh, of the joint, so when somebody comes with a limitation of the joint movement because of the arthritis, um, then you can evaluate uh, these patients. Sometimes they may have nerve damage or they, ma they may have muscle damage um, or maybe the bone fracture. There's also, uh, it can limit the movement of the joint. So it can be different reason, it just not, it's not just arthritis, it could be some other reasons as well. So this is the gliding movement that you can see in the uh, rest area. Circumduction is, you can see it in the hip joint and also you can see it in the shoulder joint. It is like drawing a circle in the air. So this is the way that is done like this. Uh, rotation side to side. So this rotation can be in the neck area, but also it can be in the hip area. Um, so you can see the rotation of the um, leg uh, or in the lower extremity, I mean in general. And also you can see the same rotation in the upper extremity. Uh, flexion and extension, the, and during the flexion the angle decreases here, the 
uh, you know the head is coming closer to the chest so this flexion or if it's going backward that increased extension uh, you can also see flexion extension and uh, uh, shoulder joints so this is moving the upper arm uh, or upper limb I should say anteriorly upward this is flexion and if you're moving it backward or posteriorly that is the extension or hyperextension uh, you see the same thing in the elbow so uh, this is the flexion and moving it uh, backward uh, it is the extension uh, same idea here in the rest area so if you move it more uh, uh, this is the anterior part of the um, forearm moving it toward the anterior part of the forearm this is flexion and if you are moving the back of the hand toward the back of the or posterior part of the forearm that is the hyperextension uh, same thing happens in the um, hip area so this is the angle is decreased this is the flexion so moving the lower limb anteriorly or if you are moving the lower uh, limb uh, more posteriorly that will be the extension or hyperextension depending on the degree uh, and the knee uh, so if you are moving it forward that is extension if you are moving the knee uh, the leg the backward uh, so the knee joint will have a flexion uh, moving the uh, lower jaw upward that is elevation or if you are moving the jaw downward that is the depression uh, so this is a jaw-dropping experience, like the first time you saw the amount of information in, the, in this class. I'm joking. Uh, so there's also protraction and retraction, so moving the jaw forward, that's protraction, and moving the jaw backward, that's retraction. Uh, there is, if you're moving your uh, ankle and your foot inward, that is inversion, moving your foot outward, that is eversion. Uh, moving your foot upward and that is this is the dorsum of the foot so moving it upward that is dorsiflexion and this is the plantar surface and if you're moving it downward that is the plantar flexion um, also in the uh, in the you see this in the hands and in this area in the uh, forearm is not shown here properly uh, so uh, pronation and supination so supination is a normal anatomical position so the face of the hand should be anteriorly and pronation is that the back of the hand is located anteriorly the face will be posterior and opposition is, is like touching the uh, different fingers uh, the, the, the four fingers to the thumb is like making an okay sign uh, that is a position that you see it mainly in humans um, abduction and adduction so you have to think of the midline here so if you are moving toward the midline that is adduction if you are moving it further away from the midline that is adduction with a b this is a d toward a b further away and uh, here is the are thinking of the uh, rest area so uh, this is if you are moving it uh, toward the body this is a d action or adduction if you are moving it further away as a b action or abduction uh, in the lower extremity same idea you have to think of the midline here if you are moving it toward the midline that is a d action if you are moving it further away is a b action also the fingers so for the fingers a little bit different so you have to think of the midline here in the hand so if you are if the fingers are moving further away from the midline that is a b action if you are moving toward the midline that is the AD action. So here is the line, the midline that I'm talking about is in the fingers or in the hand, not in the whole body, toward the whole body, because it will not make much sense. And there's also movements in the uh, uh, you know, back area and the vertebrae. So this is the flexion movement. 
uh, so moving it downward and this is the extension moving it backward there is also side flexion this is each side the side flexion right and left and also there is a rotation that the, the so this way you can rotate or you can rotate this way uh, because the vertebrae have the mobility to to move in a different directions now let's talk about different uh, articulation and the structures of the different articulations so here you can see the vertebral column you have the vertebrae so this is the, the body of the vertebrae the body are located the bodies are located anteriorly and they are connected by this intervertebral disc the intervertebral disc has three parts one is called the vertebral end plate which is the hyaline cartilage and attached to the bone uh, of the vertebrae uh, you, you have the annulus fibrosus and this is made of collagen fibers and the third one is the nucleus pulposus that is in the middle that is made of a gelatinous protein uh, so over time the amount of fluid uh, decrease in this area okay and also uh, the, the collagen fibers and the annulus fibrosus uh, damaged and then the person may get a herniation of the disc this could be because of age or also it could be from trauma or lifting something very heavy so it can happen that and if that happens you know this disc and this is the spinal cord located inside the vertebral column okay uh, canal I should say vertebral canal of the vertebral column and uh, if it is herniated then it can compress the spinal cord and that can cause a severe pain or even paralysis if it moves anteriorly you may get some pain but not as much but if you move it backward or sideways it will compress one of the spinal nerves and it can cause a lot of pain or paralysis okay uh, this area that I discussed it before but just as a, as a reminder uh, uh, this is the pedicle this is the pedicle and uh, if you put two vertebrae on top of each other then you can create intervertebral foramen and this is the spinal nerve that I was talking about it before that is um, located in that area in the intervertebral foramen so the spinal cord is located in the vertebral canal or spinal canal and the uh, uh, spinal nerve is located in the intervertebral foramen um, there are some other ligaments that support uh, the vertebral um, column uh, one is that uh, anterior longitud longitudinal ligament that is connecting the anterior part of the vertebral body and another one is the uh, posterior longitudinal ligament that is connecting the posterior part of the vertebral body okay so this is located inside the uh, vertebral canal uh, this area that you see this is called lamina this area this is the lamina if you remember it and these laminae are connected with each other in the back the back posterior part of the vertebrae uh, that is by ligamentum flavor this is another ligament that's supporting the uh, vertebrae uh, the, these are the spinous processes and they are connected with each other by two different ligaments okay one is interspinous ligament and the other one is the supraspinous ligament okay uh, you also see these articular facet these are the flat areas of the different articular processes in the vertebrae and they fuse with each other you can see it in this area and uh, sometimes uh, these uh, uh, facets uh, they slip from one to uh, over another and that will cause also back pain and that's a very common cause of back pain the slipping of uh, articular facets the glenohumeral joint this is also called the shoulder joint so far uh, 
for these ones, uh, I recommend you to, to look at the bones first. That will be easy to remember it, okay? So look at here, this is the scapula. Scapula, you can see one um, bony marking here, this is called coracoid process. This is called acromion, and this is called the glenoid cavity. So there's three different uh, anatomical features of a scapula. So this is one bone. The second bone is the clavicle, and the third bone is the humerus, and this is the head of the humerus, and this is the neck of the humerus, okay, and this is the diaphysis. So once you, you recognize these anatomical uh, features of the bone, it's easy to, to think of the ligaments. So look at it here. This is the coracoid process it's connecting with the clavicle, and that's why these ligaments are called coracoclavicular ligament. Very easy to remember. Another one is uh, connecting the coracoid process with the acromion. So this ligament is called coracoacromial ligament. Another one is connecting acromion with the clavicle, and that's called acromioclavicular ligament. See, it's so easy to remember. So these are the ligaments. So there's other stuff here also there. Uh, this is one bone. This is another bone, right? So this is the synovial joint. So it means that it's covered by a cartilage. This is articular cartilage, which is made by what type of cartilage? Hyaline cartilage, okay? Inside there is a cavity there, which is called joint cavity or synovial cavity. That is filled by the synovial fluid. That synovial fluid is coming from where? From the synovial membrane. This is the synovial membrane, okay, which is uh, located uh, deeper in, in the articular capsule, which is this. This is the articular capsule. This is the articular capsule, which is made by this irregular connective tissue. So this is one thing that you see it in all synovial joints, a similar thing that you see. Uh, then there are some other structures that you see. One of them is the supraspinatus muscle, tendon. When we get to the muscles, we will talk about that in more detail. And this one, actually, look at this one. This is called the subdeltoid Borsa. Remember borsa? That is a pouch that contains synovial fluid. So in an area there is a lot of friction and movements, you have these uh, pouches. So this is located more laterally. Subdeltoid is located more laterally. Uh, below the deltoid muscle, there is also another one that is located uh, below the acromion. So I will show you in the next image, you see that there is one um, below the acromion, but this is located more laterally. Um, so here, you, again, you look at these uh, bony structures first, and then we can talk about the joints, okay? So this is the scapula, right? So this is the glenoid cavity here. This is the coracoid process. This is acromion, and this is uh, the humerus. So the, look at the ligaments here. This is one is connecting the coracoid process to acromion, and that is called coracoacromial ligament. This is the coracoid process, and this is the humerus. They are connected with each other by coracohumeral ligament. Okay. Uh, this is the glenoid cavity, and this is the humerus. They are connected with each other by the glenohumeral ligament. So this is a, an a, in, a, intra. Uh, this is a capsular, capsular. A ligament, so this is why this whole area is the capsule, so it's hard to see it in this view. It is located anteriorly, but it's hard to see it. I will show it to you in a different image uh, that you can see it is attached to the capsule, that is why it's called capsular ligament. Another one uh, is located only on the humerus, so it's not going on into any other bone, but it's located above this uh, tendon sheet, and this tendon sheet is wrapping around the tendon of the biceps muscle. So going from one area of the humerus to another area, and that's why it's called transverse humeral ligament. Uh, this area of the scapula, if you remember it, that's called subscapula, uh, subscapular fossa, that uh, subscapular, subscapularis muscle attached there. And this is the tendon of the subscapularis muscle. Below the tendon, you have a bursa here, 
uh, that is to reduce friction and another one that I told you before uh, that's below the acromion and that is the subacromial uh, bursa so sometimes people come with a shoulder pain and there's a way to expose these ones uh, so one bursa is here that is a subdeltoid and this is the subacromial so depends on which one is more painful then you can do an injection of steroids and that way you can reduce the pain so this is a common procedure for shoulder pain this is a uh, if you can see it from a lateral view um, of the shoulder joint so again let's talk about the ligaments because that's easy straightforward so look at the different bones here this is the scapula here this is scapula here this is the coracoid process this is the acromion ac ac so both of them are part of the scapula they are connected with each other by coracoacromial ligament coracoid connects with the clavicle through the coracoclavicular ligament so nothing new it's all same information that was before acromion to the clavicle connected by this ligament and that's called acromioclavicular ligament same idea nothing new so now here look at it okay so this is the capsule of the shoulder joint this is uh, the glenoid cavity okay this is the cartilage this is the hyaline cartilage that is located on top of the glenoid cavity of a scapula and this thing that you see this is actually a fibrocartilage that is extending the joint so it's a fibrocartilage it's stronger so the capsule is made of dense irregular connective tissue right and you can also see these ones you see these ones so these are uh, ligaments which is this regular connective tissue and this is the glenohumeral ligament so from glenoid cavity it goes to the humerus and it is attached to the anterior part of the capsule of the shoulder joint and this is called the capsular ligament so you can see it here better because attached to the uh, capsule but from the anterior view is a little bit difficult to see I told you that the shoulder joint is the most mobile joint so it means it has to wrap around by different uh, structures uh, the most important ones are the tendons and the muscles uh, to increase the stability of those joints and now you can see uh, the whole joint is wrapped by different muscles so let's look at it this is the uh, supraspinatus muscle tendon this is the infraspinatus muscle tendon this is the teres minor and this is the subscapularis muscle so the whole shoulder joint is covered by these four muscles and tendons so the abbreviation of these uh, muscles are called SITS sets muscle uh, uh, so sets muscles okay and uh, if somebody is using the shoulder a lot for example uh, somebody is a painter or a boxer or maybe a golfer tennis player uh, then they are at a higher risk of shoulder damage uh, that is called rotator cough injury rotator cough injury okay so in the rotator cough injury sets muscles are damaged you also see these bursa here one is below the acromion so that is uh, I mean one is below the coracoid so sub coracoid this is below acromion so sub acromial and this is below the uh, subscapularis muscle so that's called subscapular bursa because there's mobility a lot of mobility in the shoulder joint so you have multiple bursae there elbow joints again look at the bones this is humerus this is the radius this is ulna radius is located lateral laterally ulna is located medially so here the radius is connected with the humerus and this is the head of the radius the background and this uh, ligament that you see this is called annular ligament so that is wraps around the head of the uh, radius uh, and the head of radius is connected with the capitulum or articulates with the capitulum of the humerus okay 
And another one is called the radial collateral ligament or lateral collateral ligament. So either name is correct. And here it is uh, connecting uh, the humerus, the distal part of the humerus to the uh, proximal part of the radius. If you look at this image, uh, so you can see this is the distal part of the uh, humerus and this is the proximal part of the ulna. Uh, there is a ligament here and that is called the, la the ulnar collateral ligament or medial collateral ligament. Okay, same name, medial collateral ligament or ulnar collateral ligament. Uh, you also see the annular ligament you know, that wraps around the head of the um, radius. So it's coming all the way from the ulna and then wraps around the head of the radius, going back all the way to the radius here and, go, uh, and goes back to the ulna all the way. Uh, so it's keeping the head of the radius in that area. And uh, you can also see the uh, articular capsule here uh, that um, covering the elbow joints. You do not see the lateral collateral ligament in this view. Uh, there is also the uh, tendon of the biceps uh, muscle, and here is the um, radial tuberosity that the biceps tendon muscle attaches. If you make a section of the elbow joint so you can see the bones, so this is humerus and this is the trochlea, and you can see this is the ulna and this is the trochlear notch. Okay, so uh, the trochlea of the humerus articulates with the trochlear notch of the ulna, and uh, each one is covered by the hyaline cartilage, uh, and they are separated by the synovial. Uh, fluid which is located in the synovial cavity and that synovial fluid is coming by uh, from um, synovial membrane which is located uh, in the inner part of the capsule so this is the joint capsule and also because the elbow is mobile so you can see a bursa here uh, between the tendon of the triceps uh, muscle okay that's located the back of the arm and the rest of the elbow. And so just uh, the distal part of the uh, humerus is located. Uh, so this is the hip uh, joint. So let's have two different images here. So um, again, look at the bones. So this is the ilium, and this is the pubis, and this is ischium or ischium, and this is the uh, femur, which is this, is, this is the head of the femur, and this is the neck of it. So this is a synovial joint, which again means what? Uh, this is hyaline cartilage at the end of each bone. And in the middle, you have the synovial fluid that is located in the synovial cavity, which is coming from the synovial membrane, which is located inside the joint capsule. Okay. Uh, another thing that you see is this one. So this is an intercapsular ligament, and this is called ligament and teres or ligament of head of femur. If you look at this image, again go and look at the bones, the location of the bone, uh, the bones. Um, so uh, this is the acetabulum. Acetabulum is made of uh, all three different bones. So, uh, so the ilium is there and the pubis and the ischium bone, all three of them are there. So this is made by all three bones. Uh, uh, so this is a synovial joint which means it's covered by articular cartilage which is this one and this is made of the hyaline cartilage and is located in the lunate surface of acetabulum chapter uh, 8 lunate surface of acetabulum and this is the ligamentum teres or ligament of the femoral head um, that we saw around this this one so this is the same as this one so this stabilizes the head of the uh, femur, but there is also an, an artery and a vein is connected in, the, uh, in this area. It's called fovea capitis. This is the area that is... So the head of the femur has its own blood supply. And also there is a ligament here. This is called transverse acetabular ligament that is located above the acetabular notch. 
So if you want to know where is the citabular notch, you have to go back and look at chapter uh, 8 and you see that uh, there is a citabular notch and there is a notch here on this area and this ligament is connecting uh, the, the hyaline cartilage and the um, acetabulum. You can also see this uh, small part is difficult to see. Um, uh, so this is the uh, fibrocartilage. This is called acetabular labrum. This gave stabilization uh, for the joint. Um, and uh, this is all the different ligaments that wraps around the hip joint. So look at the bones. Uh, this is the hip um, ilium. Uh, part of the hip bone, uh, hip uh, joint, I mean. Uh, so ilium is located uh, superiorly, and this is the uh, ischium located uh, posteriorly, and this is part of the pubis located anteriorly and inferiorly, and this is the uh, femur. So this ligament is connecting the pubis to the femur, and this is called the pubiofemoral ligament. And this is ilium, it's connecting ilium to the femur, and this is called the iliofemoral ligament. And this is the posterior view. How do I know this is posterior view? Is because of this. This is the ischial tuberosity. Okay, this is where when you sit, this part uh, you know is connected on supporting your body above the surface of a chair or a seat or a bed or something. And again, look at the, the different bones. So this is the ilium, this is the ischium, and this is the femur. So this is iliofemoral, from ilium goes to the femur. And this is ischium or ischium, this is going from ischium to the femur. So ischium femoral and iliofemoral. And this is the knee joint, which is the most complex joint in the body. It has a lot of different features, so superficially uh, from anterior view you can see uh, uh, different features you can uh, look at the bones first uh, this is the femur this is patella this is the sterile femur uh, this is uh, fibula laterally and tibia medially there's quadriceps uh, muscles are located in the thigh and this is the tendon of the quadriceps muscles that um, that are attached to patella the superior part of patella and here is the patella ligament that is connecting patella with the tibial tuberosity of tibia. These are also uh, retinaculae, which is the plural form of retinaculum, U-M at the end, U-M. So this is a retinaculae um, that are connecting the patella and also uh, the fibers of the quadriceps um, tendon to the tibia. Uh, and um, you also have these other ligaments. So uh, one ligament is connecting the t uh, fibula with the uh, femur, and this is called fibular collateral ligament or lateral collateral ligament. And this one is connecting tibia with femur, uh, so this is the tibial collateral ligament or medial collateral ligament. Also in the background you can see uh, the joint capsule around this area, this adipose tissue around that area. If you remove the patella and some of these uh, tendons and ligaments, then you can see something like this. So this is the end of the distal end of the femur, so you can see the two condyles of the femur, and here is the tibia and fibula. So uh, this is an area made of fibrocartilage and that's called meniscus. So you have a lateral meniscus and you have the medial meniscus. So these are the condyles of femur and these two are the condyles of the tibia. So this is how uh, these, menisca, these menisci are stabilizing the knee joint. So the, um, these two condyles do not move side to side or too much anterior posterior, okay? So this is the st stabilization. There is also a, a couple of intercapsular ligaments are here. So this is anterior cruciate ligament and this is a posterior cruciate ligament. I will show you this again in the next uh, slide. And you can also see the fibular collateral ligament attaching 
a fibula with the uh, femur and this is the tibial collateral ligament uh, that are connecting these two bones tibia and uh, femur uh, this is the posterior view um, so you can see the one ligament here and this is called popliteal ligament this is the back of the knee and uh, also see the joint capsule around this area wrapping around that uh, knee joint uh, there's also different muscles and but uh, let's talk, not talk about the muscles now uh, leave it for chapter 11 and I will discuss it in more detail there you can also see some borsae there because of the movements of these muscles uh, that is just uh, superficial to the bone so to reduce friction in that area if you remove uh, the joint capsule you can see the meniscus, so there's a medial meniscus and lateral meniscus. This meniscus continues as a ligament, and this is called meniscofemoral ligament. Meniscofemoral ligament. It's not written there. If you want, you can write it. Uh, you can also see the anterior and the posterior cruciate ligaments. And you see that um, this is the tibial collateral ligament and fibular collateral ligament. There's a lot of different images there, but the name of the uh, anatomical features are almost the same. So that does not make and does not make much uh, changes, but you can see it from a different view. Uh, this is the side view of the knee joint. So again, this is the uh, distal part of the femur. This is the proximal part of the tibia. You do not see fibula here, and this is the patella. So you have some bursae here. One is above the patella, this is called suprapatellar bursa. One is below the patella, this is called infrapatellar bursa. And one is anterior to that, this is called the uh, prepatellar bursa, just below the skin. Uh, at the end of each bone, you have hyaline cartilage, hyaline cartilage, hyaline cartilage. So these are articular surfaces. This area is the uh, knee joint and this is the synovial uh, fluid that's located in the synovial cavity and this is the synovial membrane this area and also you see these meniscus so you see only lateral meniscus here but you do not see the medial meniscus because the way they, they cut the bone uh, there is two intracapsular uh, ligaments uh, one is the anterior cruciate ligament anterior cruciate ligament prevents Okay, prevents movement of tibia anteriorly. So if this is damaged, tibia can move anteriorly, which is not normal. And the posterior cruciate ligament uh, prevents movement of the tibia posteriorly. If this ligament is damaged, tibia can move posteriorly, which is not normal. And this is from the superior view of the knee joint. Uh, this area is the anterior. How do I know this is anterior? Because this is the tibial tuberosity. So tibial tuberosity is located anteriorly. That's the, one of the easier features to know. And also you should know which one is medial, which one is lateral. So this is the uh, medial meniscus, and this is the lateral meniscus. This is the medial uh, cartilage, and this is the lateral cartilage. So if you can see, the medial side is bigger than the lateral side because the medial condyle of the femur is also bigger. There's a lot more pressure on the medial side. So this is anterior view and this is the medial view. And this is made of the uh, fibrocartilage and this is made of the hyaline cartilage. Also, you see these two cruciate ligaments. This is anterior cruciate ligament and this is the posterior cruciate ligament. Uh, thank you. If you have any question, uh, please let me know.